Let's first look at the process of refraction of light. Assume that you have a boundary separating two different media. This is medium 1, and below the boundary is medium 2. For example, this could be air, and this could be, say, glass. When you have a beam of light hitting that boundary, this incident beam would split into two. One beam would go like that. So that is the reflected beam, or the reflected ray. The other beam would penetrate into the second medium, like that. And the second beam, it's called the refracted beam. So this is the reflection process, and this is the refraction process. There are three crucial angles that we need to understand. The first angle is this angle. Let's call it theta i. So this theta i is known as the angle of incidence. And then there is a second angle. Let's call it theta r. Theta r is known as angle of reflection. And these two angles are the same. The angle of incidence must be the same as the angle of reflection. The third angle, this angle right here, the angle between this dotted normal line, the dotted line is so-called normal line. So the angle between the normal line and the refracted ray, let's call it theta ref, is known as the angle of a refraction. We again note that all these angles are measured with respect to this normal line which makes 90 degrees with respect to the boundary. From now on we shall ignore the reflected ray although it will always be there and concentrate only on the refracted ray. As you can see as light travels from one medium to another, it tends to bend. So that's why these two angles are different. What causes the light to bend is the different speed of light in the two different medium. So let's say in medium 1, the speed of light is V1, and in medium 2, the speed is V2. These four quantities, the two thetas and the two speeds, are related in the following manner. Sine of incident angle over the sine of the angle of refraction equals V1 over V2. And this ratio is a constant for a given medium pair. The light have different speeds at different medium because of a property of a particular medium known as the index of refraction. Sometimes it is also known as refractive index. This is how we define index of refraction for a particular medium. Index of refraction is speed of light in vacuum over the speed of light in that particular medium. So speed of light in vacuum is a constant. The value is about 3 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second. And this V here is the speed of light in a particular medium. Now we note that this is a ratio of speeds. So N, or the index of refraction, is a pure number. It is unitless. Also, because speed of light in vacuum is greater than speed of light in any medium, we see that index of refraction for a particular medium is greater than 1. For example, if you look at water, the index of refraction for water is about 1.333. An index of refraction for glass is about 1.5, and so on. So in this picture, medium 1 has index of refraction and 1, medium 2 has index of refraction and 2. So a ray of light or light beam that arrives at the boundary 
will tend to bend either towards the normal or away from the normal. So how do you distinguish these two cases? In refraction, a light will tend to bend towards the normal in the second medium if N1 or the first medium index of refraction is less than the index of refraction of the second medium. For example, if the light is moving from, let's say, from air to water, then the bending would be towards the normal as the light enters the water. The reason is because index of refraction for air is about or approximately 1 and for water is about 1.33. Likewise, if the index of refraction of medium 1 is greater than the index of refraction of medium 2, then the bending will be away from the normal as the light beam travels into medium 2. Example, let's say the ray of light is moving from glass with index of refraction 1.5 to air, where the index of refraction is about 1. As the light enters air, it would bend away from the normal. An alternative form to this equation is in terms of wavelength, and this is how we understand them. As light passes through from one material to another, the frequency f of the wave does not change. So this is a constant, so the frequency is the same in medium 1 and in medium 2. The reason is because the boundary surface, this one, cannot create or destroy waves, and the number arriving per unit time must equal the number leaving per unit time. Since frequency times wavelength is the speed of a particular wave, we see that by using this expression in here, we get an alternative form in terms of wavelength. The speed of light in vacuum is quite simply the frequency of light times the wavelength of light in vacuum. And speed of light in a particular medium is the same frequency, because frequency does not change, times the wavelength of light in that particular medium. And you see that frequency cancels and you end up with an expression index of refraction being equal to the wavelength of light in vacuum over the wavelength of light in a given medium. Now we are ready to talk about Snell's law. Now assume that the light hits the boundary and then refract it like that. The angle of incidence is theta i and the angle of refraction is theta ref. Now we have mentioned that sine theta i over sine theta ref is the speed of light in medium 1 over the speed of light in medium 2. Since index of refraction of a particular medium equals the speed of light in vacuum over the speed of light in that particular medium, we can rewrite the right-hand side of this equation as quite simply the speed of light in vacuum over the index of refraction of the first medium over the speed of light in vacuum over the index of refraction of medium 2, which is just N2 over N1. So there we have it. That is Snell's law or sometimes it can also be written as n1 sine theta i equals n2 sine theta refraction. Let's see how to use Snell's law in calculation. Let's look at the following problem. A beam of light in air, index of refraction is about 1, makes an angle of 35 degrees with the surface of the glass plate where the index of refraction is 1.52. Find the angle between the refracted beam and the surface of the glass plate. 
So the incident angle, in this case it's theta 1, must be 90 minus 35, which is 55 degrees. Because the angle 35 is measured with respect to the surface of the glass plate, not with respect to normal. Having found theta 1, we can use Snell's law to determine theta 2. And that is the index of refraction of air, which is the first medium in this case. So the index of refraction of air is 1. Sine theta 1, which is this angle that we have computed, 55 degrees, equals N2, index of refraction of glass, which is 1.52, times sine of angle of refraction, theta 2. And you can compute theta 2. Theta 2 will turn out to be 32.6 degrees. What we are interested in is the angle between the refracted beam and the surface of the glass plate. That means this is the surface of the glass plate and this is the angle that we are interested in. Let's call that angle alpha. So alpha is of course 90 degrees minus theta 2. So 90 degrees minus 32 0.6 degrees will turn out to be 57.4 degrees and that's the answer. Problem 2. A ray of light in air is incident at an angle 30 degrees on a glass plate as shown here. So 30 degrees is the angle of incidence. The index of refraction of glass is 1.7. At what angle is the ray refracted? So we want to determine this theta there. And if the wavelength of light in vacuum is 560 nanometer, find its wavelength in the glass. Part A can be solved using Snell's law. The index of refraction of air times sine of incident angle, sine 30 that is, equals the index of refraction of glass plate times sine theta, which is the angle of refraction. Putting in the numbers, and A, or the index of refraction of air, can be taken as 1 sine 30, which is half, equals 1.7, which is Ng, times sine theta. And you can solve for theta, which will turn out to be 17.1 degrees. So that is the angle of refraction. Now, part B, what is the wavelength of that light in glass. Now from the alternative definition of index of refraction in terms of wavelength, we have that. Now index of refraction of glass, we know to be 1.7, it's given. The wavelength of light in vacuum is 560 nanometer and the wavelength of light in glass can be computed. And that's going to give you about 329 nanometer for the wavelength of light in glass. And that solves the problem. If you find this video useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.